The Nordic energy market will be very important to reach these climatic goals because it sets in some way the scene. There is a drive from the market to push forward for these green solutions and they will tick on all 17 sustainability and development goals. Nordic Energy Research travelled through the Nordics, talking to thought leaders and exploring the potential of benefits of an electricity market and Nordic examples of renewable energy source cooperation. Developing Nordic solutions to global challenges. The electricity market is a very good example of Nordic energy cooperation because it's actually one of the markets that have been built up for many, many years. Historically, it was a Norwegian idea to balance out the market, make better use of the natural resources we had. And then in 1996, Sweden was looking at, hmm, we have a different energy mix because they have both thermal, they had nuclear power and hydropower. They decided to join Norway because in that case, they would then be in competition with Norwegians. So all of a sudden you had double the market and hence, instead of making the fish smaller, you make the pond bigger basically. And you had the world first international energy market. We need all the good cooperation that we have. We have the wind energy in the south and offshore and we have the hydropower up in, in the mountains. These two technologies can complement each other by actually helping that you always have a stable supply of electricity. Denmark works really well, and that is intermittence is, is balanced out by flexibility elsewhere. Sometimes we have more than 100% of wind energy in Denmark, then we, we need the, the neighbors to be able to use it. We have some days where the wind is not blowing. We need the neighbors to be able to supply electricity. You can actually get cheap electricity in one period and have enough electricity in another period. The fact that we could do cross-border and scale it up and trade across countries is because in the Nordic countries we have a mutual trust and we have the experience of cooperating. And this is really, really essential part of it because we needed to trust our neighbors. Our energy mixes together combined makes us better. It creates for all of us flexibility and also, at least so far, it has been very, very good from the pricing point of view. We're using the same algorithm that we have developed together with uh, other power exchanges in, in Europe ensures that you always produce the cheapest source of energy first, but also there is a point of equilibrium between supply and demand, so that when the prices are high, we see that demand goes down, helping the system which is really, really essential. And then you see it also on the supply side in every price area that if the price goes up, that's an incentive to set up another windmill or to improve your hydropower plant in that area. The Nordic countries, together we are the 11 largest economy in the world. And we also see it with research cooperation that we have research environment in these countries that are rather small uh, internationally, but going together, we get a critical mass where we actually become a key player. In the energy transition, I think the transmission system operators play a very important role because they are the ones that are going to enable uh, more consumption and more production. And one of their tasks is to make sure that there's no bottlenecks. They can try to balance the production with the consumption in real time because it needs to be in balance the whole time. And the energy markets, they can then provide you know, incentives for either to increase the production or they can bring incentives to lower the consumption. Energy markets or electricity markets are a very transparent way of doing that. If you're running a market on only renewable energy sources, the prices go radically down because the marginal cost of paying for a little bit more wind to produce energy or a little bit more sun or a little bit more rain is very cheap. You don't have to ship it, you don't have to pay carbon tax on it and you don't have to dig for it. We have synchronous systems. We have the same frequency in Finland as we have in Sweden, as we have in Norway, as we have in parts of Denmark. But we are maybe a little bit out of phase with the, with the rest of Europe. You could look at that as an, you know, as an electricity island or an energy island. Energy island is a kind of energy hub offshore, but it could also be onshore. The interconnection between the countries in the North Sea is increasing on importance as well. Instead of having lines going onshore, you can connect different energy hubs out in the sea. You can create facilities for the production of uh, hydrogen, for example, on energy islands closer to the production or generation of offshore wind. You get also get a much more integrated energy system at a lower cost out there.
these points of connections uh, will be uh, central in the planning of the grid and the energy structure of the North Sea as we go forward. People nowadays are very aware of their energy consumption and they want maybe to create their own energy island. So they want to have a microgrid, but they would like to have them as a backup or as a security than the connection to the grid. The key to turning around to a green economy is to have a competitive market. We really need to increase electrification of everything to ensure that we have enough production available to make this energy transition. In that case, you will need to have access to market you trust. Companies can include much more uh, green electricity in their portfolio. The energy market can give the right incentives for either investors to invest more in power production or to incentivize consumers to consume less at times of the day where the peaks are too high. The Nordics have gone together to make common targets to be carbon neutral. They have gone together to actually say, OK, we want to, to be the forerunners in, in the green transition. The Nordic electricity market that's still the, the number one market in, in the world. And that kind of creates a, a, a playing field for different kind of technologies that can contribute to the sustainable future. We open up the possibilities for new innovations. There will be much more integrated sectors in, in the future, meaning that you have to think about power tricks where you actually combine electricity with gas. You have to think about power to heat, where you combine electricity with, with heat, for example, district heating. We already have a lot of uh, energy stored into our system. Pump storage could not be another solution uh, if the prices are high, where you reverse the flow of hydropower, right? Heat pumps are a technology that consumes actually electricity while they transfer that heat from a source to, to the usable form in order to balance out the electricity price variations to wind and solar power, for example. The offshore wind will be a stronger part of the electricity mix. The electricity markets in the Nordic countries will benefit immensely from the fact that they have uh, balancing power already uh, on the hydropower side, to some extent uh, from, from nuclear power, and the fact that uh, the Danish uh, industry and the Danes uh, in general will build facilities to produce hydrogen based on some of that power, uh, which means that the, the balancing act uh, will be easier. Hydrogen will in the future on a bigger scale play a, a role here. And when there is a surplus of generation and then you can store the hydrogen and you can use it for generation later or for industrial purposes. Power to X uh, hydrogen generation uh, is, is a new thing that is actually uh, growing quite strongly in the Nordics. And, and it really has to happen fast in most countries because you need the hydrogen to decarbonize the, both the transport but also other hard to decarbonize sectors. You'll have both production and consumption on a more on a decentralized level. The market that we have now, it opens up for aggregators. You can participate maybe as a microgrid or you can participate with your neighborhood. Norwegian end consumers, myself included, will go into Norpool's website to see what is the spot price because that know that this is the price I'm paying for electricity in Oslo or in Tromsø or Bergen right this minute or this hour in particular. And then they will act accordingly. A platform where all of us can contribute uh, in an open and transparent way. But this model because it is technology neutral, it ensures that the cheapest source is, is produced first, it can be scaled up. And also it's proven its flexibility because the principle is very, very simple. And then you can modify the model depending on the country, on the regulation, on the energy mix. Having common energy markets is something you should have globally. If we jump out of Europe now, there is seven times more investment in countries that has a marketplace for electricity. Not necessarily a liberalized market, but a regulated market, but a market that is fair to all and that there are laws and regulations that you can understand. You should have countries much more interdependent on each other because it is a win-win situation where we all benefit.